Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And yeah, my hair is looking crazy, but I'm about ready to go to sleep soon. Um, and this is another recap of Real Housewives Miami, season six, episode 16. And this is called Adios Mexico. And this is the episode before the season finale. And also, too, I should have mentioned, too, if you are someone who also watches my Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which is up right now, that was also the episode for season before the season finale. So I guess after next week, and then I'm assuming it's going to be there, it's probably going to be a two part reunion. I'm not sure what else to review after that. Um, so we're kind of getting close to the end of the road. Um, I don't know what the next Real Housewives shows will be. I believe it might be Real Housewives New Jersey. And I'm not sure if I'm going to review that because <laughs> I'm kind of sick of the Teresa and Melissa, um, saga of it all. I know it's supposed to be different this season, but yes, yeah, so I probably won't be reviewing that. So you might be getting a break from that. And then I know the Real Housewives of Orange County is filming right now. Um, I would think the Real Housewives of Dubai is coming up. And then, ooh, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Um, I do see that that's a coming soon. So that's definitely going to be in the rotation. So we'll, we'll have some things. I'm just not sure when we're going to resume the reviews of it all. Um, I know also for those who watch some of the Netflix shows, Love is Blind is going to be coming up soon. I honestly don't have interest in that show other than the Chicago season. I, I don't care. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be honest. I only watched it because of the Chicago season. Because the guy who I was dating at the time was actually classmates with one of the uh, cast members. So I was very overly invested for that reason. That reason only. Anyway, um, that's not why we're here. Let's get into review of Real Housewives of Miami, shall we? I also should say that a lot happened with this episode, but also a lot didn't happen. Um, I would say because this beat the episode before the um, finale, it was a little bit of a filler episode, but kind of really wasn't. So anyway, um, the, there's a little bit of a Real Housewives montage where the ladies are still in Mexico. It's day four. Um, Alexi is talking to Todd via FaceTime, kind of recapping things. Um, Dr. Nicole was talking over phone with her mom. And then Lisa is recapping everything that happened the night before with her boyfriend, Jody. Um, Cause we know the last episode left off with Lisa and Kiki getting into it along with Lisa signing the settlement papers and all that. So anyway, so while she's talking to Jody, Dr. Nicole actually pays um, Lisa a visit in her room and checks in on her and one thing I do appreciate and love about Dr. Nicole, Dr. Nicole, um, I think once Alexia and um, Marisol stops finding ways to like argue with her, I think she's going to end up being the glue of this cast, to be honest, because she seems to be the one who always has the most grace for others and brings people together. Um because I think what happened here, I don't know for sure, but this is my theory. So bear with me here. I think um, because Dr. Nicole has always been very careful with her words and articulate her words well, still sharing how she feels, but not in a way where it's harsh. And she's also been allowing grace um, when it comes to Lisa because Dr. Nicole has also been divorced before, too. And also, the other thing that she does very, very well that I will say is, I noticed that Dr. Nicole, of everyone, minus talking to Alexia and Amirasol, she seems like she's the one who could talk others off like the ledge, especially Lisa. Um, she knows how to handle Lisa. It's kind of like my thoughts with that. Anyway, so... She was basically stating like, you know, you've been in fight mode this whole time dealing with Lenny. You need to release that and not do that with your friends, basically. Um, and Dr. Nicole asked, like, you know, what's her support system looking like when it comes to her family? 
And Lisa does state that her mom is coming to pay a visit next week from Canada. Because um, for those who don't know, um, Lisa is from Canada. And um, we actually do find out more that Lisa has had this pattern her pretty much her whole entire life, like impressionable life, um, of relying on a man to take care of her. Um, minus her dad, because apparently her dad was kind of similar to... Her dad wasn't really in the picture like that, from what I've gotten. And so, ever since she was 16, because she moved out when she was 16 years old, similar to Kiki, mind you, um, but for in a different way. And she moved in with a boyfriend at the Times family, and then from there, she's moved... When she was 18, she moved in with another boyfriend, and this has been like her whole entire pattern where she just has never really been on her own. It's like she doesn't really know how to do that. Um, which, that's very clear. That's pretty, that's freaking obvious. Um, and to be honest with you, hearing more about this, it just makes me feel sorry for her. Um, not in the way that you would think, because I still do feel a way about everything, the way that Lisa's been behaving this whole season. But it's like, She's never, it's like she's never have given herself the chance of being independent. And she's kind of, it sounds like she's always just been in survival mode. But like, because she's not able to rely on herself, she's literally always in like this fight mode at all times because she's never, ever been able to rely on herself. She's always relying on a man, which again, we we're seeing here that's fleeting. You know, you, you, <laughs> if that's a pat it, i guess for me the part that i kind of don't relate to and don't really understand is why I keep repeating the same thing if you know that it's not working like it seems like she she so she's aware that she has this pattern but she keeps yet she keeps doing it so that's the only thing i'm just kind of like that's weird anyway so um they do bond a little bit over their daddy issues. And Dr. Nicole shares her thoughts regarding meeting her dad's girlfriend. And um, Lisa's like, yeah, you need to do that. You should meet your dad's girlfriend. And next, the ladies do get ready. So that pretty much ends there. And the ladies get ready to go shopping. Um, we find out that Gertie is sick again. So she won't be joining them. But uh, Marisol is doing a lot better. So she is joining them. Because last episode, it was Marisol that was sick towards the end of the episode. This Mexico trip has been rough on rough on these ladies. I'll tell you what. It's like it's it's and it's not um in a way where yeah, it's been kind of emotionally rough. But it's just like people have gotten sick left and right. Um, but anyway. So um all the ladies meet up in the lobby and get ready to go shopping. Kiki and Lisa Lisa say hi to each other. Um Kiki does say in her confessional that she wants to resolve things and doesn't want to hold a grudge with Lisa. Um, but the ladies are in two different vans. And then Dr. Nicole and Lisa are discussing Kiki with Julia and Adriana. Lisa, Lisa feels a way that, that the fact that the ladies are annoyed with her and she doesn't like that. Um, and then Kiki and the other van are with Larsa, Alexia, and Marisol. And Alexia and Marisol are both stating to Kiki that she is, Lisa is just kind of naturally self-absorbed and kind of, and, it has always been that way. And in uh, um, Alexia's confessional, she's like, I've known her for 13 years, and this has kind of always been her. Um, hopefully with this divorce, that might change, but she doesn't see it. Um, which makes sense, because it's like, you know, you and Lenny had to have something in common for y'all to have been together for as long as you guys have been together. Just saying. Anyway. But they do end up going shopping, it's like kind of cute, artsy, traditional Mexican stuff that they see. Um, there's a cricket out there, like just crickets just out there, like in like a, like a bowl, like not live crickets, but like they're cooked for you to like have as like a snack. And Kiki eats one and stays her confessional as her first time having a cricket. She's had one in uh, Mexico before. She says it, you know, she's used to having things stuck up her throat. 
<laughs> so while they are shopping, Kiki does end up going to talk to Lisa. Kiki does apologize by what she said. She's like, look, I was really, really mad at you. And I did take it too far saying that this was your karma. Like, I shouldn't have said that. And Lisa actually does own it, finally. And she apologized about everything she said as well. She's like, I shouldn't, you know, said that about, you know, saying that it's your trauma. I shouldn't have said anything like that. And I shouldn't have went off at you at the on, on the gondola ride. She basically, she literally apologized for everything. And she literally named what she was apologizing for. So you could tell it's pretty genuine. And... Lisa does state to her, and all, and also in the confessional, that she realized she's been lashing out on everyone because of everything that's going on with her and Lenny. Like, it's literally turning her to a monster. Like, in case she was spiraling, she admits it. And, um, hold that thought. Child, my cats are on demon time and knocked down the whole entire lamp. <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? And which is weird because it's not like them. They don't normally knock things down like ever. I don't know what was going on. And then the funny thing is when I went to check on it, see what happened. They were both hiding underneath my bed because they knew they messed up. <laughs> anyway, for those who didn't know who watched just my reviews only, I have two cats and they're normally not on demon time. They're normally actually pretty chilled right now, but probably because I'm awake still, they're like, oh, we're awake. They're, they're team too much. But anyway, that's not why you're here. Back to what I was saying. So, um, Lisa basically, long story less long, realizes she was lashing out for no reason. And um, so things were resolved, and I do appreciate that. That's one thing I like about this franchise. They actually resolve issues. Take notes potomac take notes anyway so lisa has to leave just in case there is um just in case lenny doesn't sign the settlement and there is a trial so she leaves and then um dr nicole has to leave as well so after the shopping they both actually leave to go back to miami while the rest of the ladies stay a little bit longer and what's going to be happening this evening is a tequila tasting that Larsa set up for her company along with Kiki and Julia's birthday because I think we forgot, but that's the other reason why they're there because it's Kiki and Julia's birthday. So apparently they're both, um, they're both Geminis. Seems like they're both Geminis. I'm going to double check that. One moment. Correction, they're both cancers. But anyway, um, they are getting ready. So fast forward, they get back to um, the hotel. They're getting ready for Kiki and Julia's birthday. Um, Gertie is still sick, so she's still not joining them. But Julia does check in on her through FaceTime, make sure she's good. Ciao, poor Gertie. Like this, <laughs> the latter half of this trip just did not go how she wanted it to go. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they um, also to um, I forgot to mention when they were going shopping that Mirasol and Kiki brought a pinata. And so they have the pinata right now and they're filling it up with dildos. <laughs> and um, Larsa and Marcus are talking uh, over the phone via FaceTime about her tequila and um, what we do find out from Larsa how she started the brand is something that her dad brought to her attention to start uh, years ago, but she wasn't really ready. And once the opportunity represented itself and she had more of the time, aka her kids got older, she decided to pursue it. So that's what happened there. I was actually trying to look up to see who Larsa's dad is, because for those who don't know, Larsa's from Chicago. So I think her family here are like restaurant owners or something like that here in the city. I don't remember because I keep for I, I was trying to look it up and I can't find anything about it. Um, anyway, put in the comments if you guys know, because I know I'm pretty sure her family's tied to like the um, food and beverage industry here in the city. Um, so it actually makes sense that the tequila thing would happen. I just, I didn't, I just, I guess I didn't put it together when she first mentioned it. I was like, oh yeah, I always forget 
that I have to kind of claim Larsa because she's from Chicago. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not still not going to claim her. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so Alexia does share her support of Larsa and her confessional, but she doesn't like how she presented um, the whole tequila tasting thing to her because we saw like at the very beginning of the Mexico trip, Larsa flew all, all the way off the handle and started saying that, you know, she doesn't have a Todd to Alexia. So Alexia still feels a way about it. And um, anyway, so they get there and um, they are doing the tasting minus Marisol. Marisol does not like tequila. I didn't know this actually. So she orders vodka instead. And she really only drinks, we found out she only drinks tequila, like if it's like mixing something, but even then she still doesn't really like it. And apparently there's still some unresolved issues with Alexia and Larsa. And, um, you know, Alexia, so Larsa's like, thank you for coming. Thank you everyone for supporting me. I work really, really hard. And then Alexia kind of chimes in. It's like, yes, yes, you do. But we all work hard. We all work hard. Just kind of passive aggressively saying it like that, but she does spin it to be at Cheers. Larsa leaves it alone. She doesn't go do much about it. And then they do a Cheers. And to Alexia's point, she really does mean what she says. She's like, I don't like that Larsa makes it seem like she's the only hardworking woman here. We all work our behinds off. Which, facts. The, no one is there is working less. Well... I guess is relative to what you mean, but all of them are hustlers. You know, they're not just, they, they're not all, all of them don't just have the real housewives check and that's it. They're doing other things because although the real housewives check is good money, it's not enough to sustain their lifestyle, especially being in Miami. So they all have to do a little bit more besides that. Even Lisa in her dependent ways is trying to find her own business and laying to continue things because she even knows that she can't continue to always rely on a man, even though she still kind of is. Um, but she knows, I think she has an idea that she has to fix that. Um, but everyone is, you know, pretty much bosses. I mean, that's kind of what it is, but anyway, so it kind of, that's kind of what happens there. So Larsa then states and um, presents a diamond necklace with the brand, the um, like the brand symbol on the necklace to three of the ladies because she couldn't get it made on time for all of them to have one. So she gives one to Kiki, Julia, and Alexia. And <laughs> Kiki is shading her in confessional. She's like, okay. That's cute, except for when it was your birthday, I actually gave you an actual necklace from my heart that I purchased and made, and you give me one that the brand dealer made for you to promote your business. Which, the funny thing is, Kiki is literally saying the similar thing that Alexia has been saying about Larsa and how she just always uses, like, Things to, like she just uses an excuse to promote her business. It's never about just giving someone something. It's always like a brand deal or something like that. And I mean, Julia didn't say anything about it. She's like, whatever, it's a free diamond necklace. But I can see both sides of it. It is what it is. I mean, why do we expect any different from Larsa? I mean, it's Larsa. <laughs> anyway, so the relays are done with the testing. And they're having their dinner now. Um, so they go to a different part of the, the, ba the, the uh, they go to a different part of the building to have dinner. And um, Blaze cheers to um, Alexia for a great trip since this is the final night for Mexico. And they reflect how far they have came from last year's birthday. Because last year's birthday, for those who watched last season, was a disaster. They're in... Um, they were at the Bahamas and they were sitting in two separate like tables because they just were not doing well. So it was a whole entire thing. Um, so, but now everyone's together for the most part, minus um, 
you know, Dr. Nicole, Lisa, and Gertie, because, you know, the two of them went home and Gertie's like sick. So, um, Larsa asked the ladies if there's one thing that they could, um, take from someone from the table, what would it be? And <laughs> Alexia states, you know, she loves Kiki's energy. It's so positive. It's great. So nice, sweet words. And then Adrian states, Marcus. <laughs> to Larsa, just being shady. And Julia asks Larsa if she's a jealous type. And Larsa's like, no, of course not. No, I'm not. And then Julia being messy because child, she is just deciding she's going to link all the way in and being a mess box. Um, ask if MJ, a.k.a. Michael Jordan, approves of Larsa and Marcus's relationship. <laughs> and child, this was funny to me. I ain't going to lie. Because I feel like the reason why the ladies are asking this, because I think some of the ladies are like me and do not believe that this relationship is real. That's why they're doing this to her. I don't think they, I don't think they would be questioning any of this if they believe this relationship was real. I don't think they believe this relationship is real. So they're just glinging all the way in asking these type of questions. Anyway, so... Larsa deflects and states that her mom, his mom approves. And Julia's not letting her deflect. Like, well, that's nice now, but what about the dad, though? <laughs> and Julia confessionals like, I know Larsa's hiding something about this relationship. Something about this relationship is just not right. Because it's not a real relationship. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, man. Marisol leaves. Um, she says, you know, she's, she kind of like walks. She, she stands up and says, hey, I'm going to be leaving soon. I actually have to go to Europe because me and Steve, we're going to be renewing our vows in Scotland. But before we do that, um, she presents the pinata. And then they had the ladies like dig out a pinata. So they didn't like bust a pinata. They're digging out a pinata. And it is dildos everywhere. A table full of dildos. <laughs> and mind you, they're in a public place. And there's like restaurant people and everything there. So it's just kind of hilarious that they have this table full of dildos. And Adriana's like laughing, but she's not really amused. She's like, why are people going wild over these dildos? Like they're not even that big. She's like, I prefer mine to be thicker and bigger. And I was like, child, don't we all? <laughs> anyway, both Alexia and um, also she mentioned she prefers the real thing. And I'm also like, don't we all? Um, <laughs> anyway, so then Alexia and um, Marisol, they present the cakes to Julia and Kiki and child, they get in a food fight with the cake. So the cakes didn't even stand a chance. And I was like, damn, because the, the chocolate cake looked really good. I really would have wanted to eat that. Hopefully they have backup so they can actually really eat the cake because they just destroyed the cake. Like Kiki put um, ate, like Alexia's head in the cake. And so they all just had cake and stuff all over their face. And they're playing with the dildos. And it was a great way to end the trip. It was cute, light, and fun. So I would say between all the cast trips um, that I've seen so far since I started the reviewing reviewing the Housewives, uh, Miami was the best. It was the most entertaining to watch. Now, of course, Salt Lake City had the most dramatic one, so it kind of was like number one when it came to that, and. Honestly, it was more fun up until it got to the dramatics of it all. So, never mind. I'll say Salt Lake City was number one. Miami was number two. Um, and then I will say um, Beverly Hills number three for um, Spain. And then Vegas, Beverly Hills is number four. And then Austin, child. <sighs> I would have stayed at home. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Well, I would just stay at home. But anyway, that is the end of the Mexico trip. 
Okay, so the ladies are finally back in Miami, and we have our real, our typical Real Housewives mon montage. So Julia's cleaning her dog. Gertie is still sick with Russell helping her out, so she's in bed. Um, Alexia and Frankie, um, this is going to be like the first scene where they're at the Des Moines Foundation working with Frankie. And for those who are new to this, um, Frankie started going to the Des Moines Foundation last season and it has improved Frankie so much. Like he is so much more social, so much more talkative. And the goal of the foundation is basically make him become more independent and basically be able to be, hopefully be self-sufficient at some point in time. Um, only, I mean, um, of course, up to his ability. And um, Frankie is making a lot of progress, but both, you know, Peter, which is Frankie's um, brother, and um, Alexia are not ready for Frankie to take an Uber yet. So that's like a huge step for Frankie to order an Uber and take it. They're not ready for him to do that yet. And she's talking to the president of the Des Moines Foundation about it. And we find out that Alexia decided, ended up getting that, taking that apartment that um, her and Frankie viewed a couple episodes ago. So we actually saw it too. They end up taking it because they were running out of time and that was the only apartment they could find. So, and it makes sense because based off of when it was filmed, yeah, as someone who's been kind of been casually house hunting myself, I believe it. Anyway, so long story less long, Alexia still needs to let go of her need of being of, of coddling um, Frankie Frankie still needs it clearly to a certain degree because she has a lot more nervousness because she, he is moving to a new building so leaving him there by herself by himself she's worried about and also too we find out she wasn't even supposed to be there she was supposed to just drop him off and leave but because she was still there um the the president's like you gotta go you can't you're not supposed to even be here you're you're kind of you're, you're calling him right now. And um, that's been the running thing with Alexia in general. She is a habitual caller of both her kids, not just Frankie. She, she it, And it's almost to their detriment. Um, yeah, that's kind of the common thing that she does. But, you know... As I can't really judge her for it too much because I'm not a parent. So I don't, I don't know. I, I can't imagine. And also, especially with Frankie's accent, I really couldn't imagine. And raising two boys, it's a lot. Okay, so then we see that Lisa and Jody are drinking some tequila at her house. Uh oh, at his house. Sorry, at his house. And the settlement went through. We find that out. And Lenny is building a house. Um, he agreed to build a house for her and the kids. And it's a six bedroom. And the house that um, the house plan that Lenny picked out happens to be Jody's house plan. <laughs> Lenny didn't know that, of course. It was through like a different contract or whatever. But it was literally Jody's house plan that he created for himself. But he was never able to build during, um, you know, the pandemic, the COVID of it all. So. That's interesting. And um, I guess because Lisa mentioned made a comment and I was kind of even wondering why, because the way the house was laid out and then there being hot tubs and stuff like that, it totally sounds like a bachelor pad. The house is, is very much like a bachelor pad. And I partially am wondering. I don't know. I don't trust Lenny. I feel like Lenny knew, and I feel like this is his way of getting out of the settlement agreement. I don't know. I mean, we'll find out in the season finale if this is what happened or the reunion. Because as far as I know, I don't think their divorce is finalized yet. So there's something, something going on there. But anyway, that's just my thought. I just, it, it's too much of a coincidence that I'm not trusting it. <laughs> anyway, and I feel like Lisa should feel that way too. But instead, she's like, oh, that's funny. But she's more or less concerned that Jody might be more like Lenny than she realized. I'm just like, you do have a type. You, I don't understand why you don't realize you have a type. 
But anyway, um, so, cause then she also mentions like, oh my gosh, I'm a little worried about that. I hope I'm not dating someone who's like Lenny. I want someone who's nothing like him. Well, in order for you to get someone who's nothing like him, him you have to have someone who does not put up with your BS and you're not dependent on. That would be the only way. My opinion. Anyway, so we do find out towards the end of seeing that the division of assets and parenting arrangements still need to be settled. So maybe that's the reason why the, the divorce is being held up still. But I'm just hoping next season we're done talking about this. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm over it. And it's getting tired. <laughs> it's been tired. Y'all know it's been tired. Y'all know how I feel about it. It's it, yeah. And I think even I'm about to give you a little bit of preview. Gertie gets into it with Lisa in the season finale next episode. I think it has some has to do with Lisa's constant talking about this because it's really annoying. Anyway, so Dr. Nicole meets up with her dad. Um, so she ends up she does end up meeting up with her dad and her dad's girlfriend for lunch and child. Her dad's girlfriend's name is Isis. And I'm like, oh, so my grandma who passed away recently, I called her is is because she didn't know that you actually announced it Isis because <laughs> she told me to call her that while I was like little, little. So I've always called her. That. I've never called her like by um, her actual name, like ever. <laughs> and um, so it just I don't know. I was like, oh. <laughs> It made me think about my grandma a little bit. So I was like, oh, but anyway, so as Dr. Nicole's waiting on her um, father and girlfriend and her father's girlfriend to show up, Dr. Nicole's uh, mom calls and wishes her luck. It's like, hey, be nice. And she's like, yes, I got it. It's not a big deal. But she does meet. She does end up meeting them. And it is kind of awkward um, because her dad is her dad. Her dad was a trip. <laughs> her dad was a trip and a character and although dr nicole still doesn't understand how a 20 a 30 something year old um girlfriend could like her dad i'm sorry i could see it her dad is very her dad was very very char charismatic that personality is different but in the best way possible that confidence it's so like ridiculous that I could see how he's pulling them. He definitely is that dude. I could tell. I could tell. I could tell he was that dude. But anyway, the meeting was overall went overall fine. Her and Isis will be fine. Um, I. It was a good way to end and see that. Okay, everything was good with that. Um. For those who don't remember, her dad did pass away. And I don't know if it's going to be talked about during the finale or during the reunion. I'm sure it's going to be mentioned during the reunion. So it does make me sad that he's no longer here. But the scenes with her dad is always just light and fun. Now, last season, it wasn't because they weren't really good. But it's good that they figured out the things that she just realized her dad is just her dad. And he's just kind of crazy. And she embraces it. So there's that. So next, um, we see that Julia um, is at, at the farm. And she's bringing some jam to um, Ryan, the operator um, the operator ma manager for sale. So for those who don't know, and I kind of knew this because of watching BravoCon, um, Julia sells jams. like, And the jams are from her farm. And... Actually, when Alexi was there visiting her at the farm, they actually made a jam together, a collaboration. They made one with guave because that's more of, you know, a Cuban thing um, where it's in the jam. And um, because, you know, Julia's jam is more Russian based. So um, they made they made like a Cuban Russian collaboration is what she likes to say. And um, anyway, the reason why she is selling and putting this jam out there is to help her support the farm um, that she has. And um, so while they're there, kind of just like celebrating that they that they did this, they have this jam because um, Alexia does join her. 
Um, Adrian does FaceTime them and invites them to a party at Emil Emilio Suite for a listening part, uh, a listening se session for like um, her new song that um, Emilio produced. Um, so it's a song that we haven't heard yet. It was the one that she was recording when she was at the studio. And um, so while they're talking about this, <laughs> Adriana mentions that Michael Jordan said that, um, you know, what Michael Jordan said about Marcus and Larsa, and that he doesn't really approve of them dating. Um, and for those, I mean, for those who are under a rock, that's been a thing where it was revealed that Michael Jordan does not approve of their relationship. And the ladies all read the article verbatim what it says, Ger like in the confessional. So Gertie's reading about it, Alexia, Adriana, Kiki, and Julia. And they're all reading it shadily in um, their confessionals. And I was getting my life. I thought it was hilarious. And Adriana states playing simple. She's going to say something about it to Alexia when she sees her next. And... <laughs> I mean, I think Michael Jordan said what he said, because I actually, I think I either saw it or watched it, whatever that happened originally, because he doesn't believe the relationship was real. Just like no one does. No one believes this relationship is real. Okay. And spoiler alert, she broke up with him like two days ago, like around the Super Bowl, because she wanted to have a moment, apparently just like Usher and like Beyonce had the moment. She broke up with him the same day. And just kind of like, oh, so your contract is up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I the only one who doesn't believe this relationship is real? I feel like no one believed this relationship, but that's why they just like, okay, no one believes it. We should just break up. Just say. Anyway. So last <laughs> but not least, the ladies which is basically Kiki, Adriana, and Larsa. They meet to play pickleball, and they suck. None of them are good at this game. And um, Kiki, so they show them playing briefly. They're not very good. They stop. And right away, Kiki and Adriana waste no time and mention that Michael Jordan interview to Larsa. Larsa is basically implying that Michael Jordan was joking in a defensive way, that he wasn't serious, like he laughed when he said that. And Adrienne knows that she's deflecting and Kiki's not letting up. And she's like, that doesn't even like Kiki's like, that doesn't even make any sense. That sounds like a lie. And, um, and she says it out loud and Larsa states in her confessional that she's embarrassed about it. And she's basically playing a victim saying like, you know, this is something that um, Marcus should be addressing, not me. And I feel like I'm being like interrogated by my friends. It's like, girl, you're not. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Anyway, so that is where the episode ends. And I guess the reason why I felt like a filler to me, because it was kind of Larsa heavy. And Larsa's storyline is she has no storyline. So it's kind of boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like because. This relationship's not real. It's hard for me to care about anything that's going on with Larsa. Like, she's good as, like, a supporting cast person, but as far as, like, her sto her personal story, because she actually refuses to get super personal, I don't believe anything she says. Anyway, and then also, too, we know I'm sick of hearing about Lisa, so... And we're not... I, I wish we could just went back to talking about Kiki, to be honest, because really, just give Kiki the mojito and call it good. Just give it to her. But anyway, <laughs> that does um, conclude the um, episode. Um, so I did mention a little bit of the preview of the season finale. So the season finale, we're going to see that um, Lisa's mom visits her. Basically mentions she never liked Lenny. Okay, spoiler. Like, I'm not shocked by that. Larsa talks to Marcus about what happened with Adrian and Kiki, confronting her about what her, his dad said. Um, Alexia talks to... Um, her son, Peter, about him possibly being Frankie's guardian if something was to happen to her. And then um, Gertie has enough and goes off on both Larsa and Lisa. And I want to know what happened, what led to that, because, yeah, it looks like towards the end she kind of ate and left no crumbs at the end. So she had enough of something. So we'll find out what happened there. And this happens at Emilio's party when she kind of goes off on both of them. But anyway... 
Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl, Sharon, a.k.a. the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And ciao. Miami's still that girl. But anyway, I will see you next time. Bye.